that you've chosen to be with us today here at First Southern. We're centrally located in the heart of the River Valley, just minutes from Greenwood and Fort Smith, between Barling and Lavaca, one mile east from the Fort Chappie entrance. We're a biblically based family. We're made up of ordinary people who serve an extraordinary God. We're comprised of a variety of folks with all kinds of different backgrounds, but we have one heart and one goal, and that's to experience authentic, spirit-led worship. So our focus is exactly what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 22, is to love God and to love people. Our worship times begin every Sunday morning at 9.30, followed by our life groups for all ages, where we look at the truths of God's Word in our lives. If you'd like more information, you can look us up on the web at firstsbc.com or on social media at firstsbc. You might be new to the area, might be looking for a, a place for your family, purpose, whatever it may be. We would love to experience our time with you here at First Southern. Well, good morning. Oh, I was a little on. The, oh, thank you. I like that. Let me try that again. Good morning. Wow, I feel honored. That's the. That's really good. I, just a couple announcements for you guys wait, today. Wait, I'm sorry. This today is not about you, so you need to. But there's flowers leave. up there. No, uh, that's is not it, for you. Well, is it a special day today? For me. And oh. all the other mothers in the room. Oh. Yes, it sure is. Oh, well, then please give it up for my wife, <laughs> Haley Lowry. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, next door in the fellowship hall, we have a photo backdrop set up if you would like to go over there after the service or after a life group later and have your picture taken with your mother or grandmother or that special um, mom in your life. Feel free to do that. Um, our first announcement this morning, ministry surveys. Um, these are on the table in the foyer right out there. I know last week was the ministry fair, and it went really well. Um, these are just available for you to pick up. They want you to take them home, pray over them. Just ask the Lord where he would have you serve um, in our church. There's always a need for us to serve, and we know that it's also a biblical command for us to serve in our church. Um, I know for me personally, it just brings me so much joy to be able to serve in my church with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, so make sure you look at those and get those ready to turn in. We're also having our ministry appreciation night. If you are already serving in any capacity within the church, they are having a dinner for you Sunday evening, May 19th, which is next Sunday at 6 p.m. You do need to RSVP your attendance. Um, there will also be child care, so you'll need to let Cheryl know all that information's in your bulletin. Um, also, don't forget Falls Creek is coming up. There is a mandatory parent and camper meeting on Wednesday, May 29th. So put that on your calendar. That's also in your bulletin. And last but not least, we're having a barbecue picnic at Barling Park on Sunday, May 26th. So lots of fun and fellowship for the whole church. That's going to be a fun day, Memorial Day weekend. So there's your announcements for the morning. Sorry, Daniel, that's it for you, son. <laughs> okay, I hate to tell you that. Well, it's good to see everyone today. God bless you for being in the, uh, the Lord's house. Are you glad to be here? Say amen. amen. Let's stand and let's welcome each other. God bless you. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus. 
Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in Savior's love. Darkness seems to hide his face. I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. My anchor holds within the veil. Christ shall come with trumpet sound oh may i then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before the There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come. There is one born for our salvation, Jesus. There is a light that overwhelms the darkness. There is a kingdom that forever reigns. There is a freedom from the chains that bind us. Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the waters, who speaks to the sea, who stands in the fire beside me. He roars like a lion, he bled as the lamb, he carries my healing in his hands, Jesus. There is a name I call in times of trouble, there is a song that comforts in the night. There is a voice that calls the storm that rages. Jesus, my Jesus, who walks on the waters, who speaks to the sea, who stands in the fire beside me. He roars like a lion, he bled as a lamb, he carries my healing in his hands it's jesus say these great names come on sing it messiah my savior there is power in your name you're my rock and my redeemer there is power Peace. 
inside me. You roar like a lion. You bled as a lamb. You carry my healing in your hands. God, you walk on the waters to the sea. You stand in the fire beside me. And you roar like a lion. You bled as a lamb. You carry my healing in your hands. Jesus, there is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. What a true statement. There is no one like you because you're such a good good father if you agree with that say amen this morning man let's sing it together and i've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but i've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. for answers far and wide but I know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we can say a word you're a good good father to you are to you are who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am you're perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you're perfect in all of your ways to us amen let's sing it again come on you're perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways you're perfect in all of your ways And love so undeniable, I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable, I can hardly think as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Still into love, love, love. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you who I am and you're perfect sing you're perfect in all of your ways 
You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to All God's people said, amen. Bless you. Be seated, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, Lee. Isn't it great to be in the Lord's house with His people today? Amen. Take your Bibles, if you would. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians. We are going to continue uh, where we have been. But let me give you a little word, moms. Uh, I almost bought bags of M&Ms for you today. It's called Ministry of Mom Day All right, here at First Southern. Because the passage is so pertinent uh, for that, to be honest with you. I have to say, uh, every, for, I don't know, I think 10, 12, more than that. Uh, when I got here, they were still doing a, a Mother's Day uh, a breakfast. And so I have to say, uh, Miss, Miss Mindy, thank you so much for being here today. Stay in your family, for you guys being here uh, with us today to be our special guest speaker, to challenge our, our ladies over there in such a, a beautiful way. Thank you so much. Uh, Allison, Cheryl, thank you for all you guys did again that set up. And Greg? Obviously, you fed them well. Amen. Ladies, was it good? Yes. Amen. As you turn to 1 Corinthians, I didn't know if I was going to do this or not, but I think I have to. And uh, these are nine words that women use. Men, pay close attention. Young men, pay close attention. Sons, daughters. The first word that women use is the word fine. This word's women use to end an argument when they are right and you need to shut up. Number two. Amen. Didn't take long, did it? Five minutes. If she's getting dressed, that means half an hour. Five minutes means five minutes for you, which means 25 more for her. Number three, nothing. This is the calm before the storm. <laughs> this means that something you should be on your toes. Arguments begin with nothing and usually end in fine. Number four, go ahead. I have a feeling you use this, Allison. This means I dare you. <laughs> Don't do it, men. Number five, a loud sigh. And that's actually a word, not the nonverbal statement often misunderstood by men. A loud sigh means she thinks that you're an idiot and wonders why she's wasting her time standing there talking to you. Number six, that's okay. This is one of the most dangerous statements a woman can make to a man. That's okay means she wants you to think long and hard before deciding how and when you will pay for your mistake. <laughs> Number seven, thanks. A woman says, thank you, do not question, just say you're welcome and walk away. Number eight, whatever. This is a woman's way of saying, don't even try it. Number nine, don't worry about it, I got it. Men, this is another dangerous statement, meaning that something that a woman has told a man to do several times, now she's doing it herself. This will result in men asking, what's wrong? And for that answer, go back to number three, nothing. Here we go. That's a true story right there, y'all. First Corinthians chapter 3 today. Uh, one of the things that I love about where we have been through these last couple of weeks, we have what we call a ministry emphasis here at First Southern. We do this every year, very specifically, intentionally, and there's reason why. In chapter 3, Paul uh, begins to really encourage, to motivate what he's trying to get a point here to the church at Corinth. One of the things, if you look, if you were to go through the New Testament, we have done this in our life group time, literally going through the books of the New Testament. One of the things we see is a, is a common theme, so to speak. We see Paul has a great emphasis on encouraging and in bringing up those who are in the body of Christ. One of his, his big motivators is our Lord's second coming, his return for his people. Not just his return, but the intention of why he's coming and what will take place when that happens. Matter of fact, in Philippians chapter 3, it says this, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but one thing I do, I forget about what lies behind, and I strain forward to what lies ahead. I press towards the goal with the prize upward, uh, upward call of God in Christ Jesus. 
And so when Paul makes a statement like that, which we see throughout the New Testament, he does so with a word of encouragement, not to bring anything to himself or to take away from anybody else. It's kind of like today. It's kind of like today. Uh, one of the things that I, I'm going to throw this out there, if you've already done this, don't put your head down and give it away, all right? Don't, don't say that you've done this. But today is Mother's Day. We have Father's Day coming up. and we have those. When that takes place, one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to say, to the best mom in the whole world. Because you're literally comparing her to other moms that are out there. It's the same thing in life. And, and you're saying, well, you've, you're better than them this. And you're not as good. Just say this, to the mom that God blessed me with. Because that's exactly what the truth is. You don't want to compare your mom to anybody else because you don't want your mom being compared to anybody else. All right? You, you don't want that to take place. That's who God uniquely gave you. And so it's the same thing he's saying here in this passage. He's not comparing the believers to anybody else. He's not setting himself up too high or too low in any way. He's saying he's not bearing anybody, not trying to show money up. He says, here, here's where the Lord needs to be glorified. And one of the things we see about Paul is he's not kind of a, a halfway kind of guy, is he? Uh, the men in this room would say this without question. We would say that Paul was a man's man. Paul was, a, if you want you some, you can come get you some kind of guy. Paul says, if we're going to run the race, then I'm going to run to win that race. Paul says, if we're going to fight, then I'm going to do so to win the wreath of that fight. And he wasn't competing against other believers, but he was competing against himself, which sets the background for our passage today in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. One of the things that we do here is we stand in honor of reading the Word. So if that's possible for you, please stand with me today as we begin in verse 10. It says, according to the grace of God given me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care of how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which was laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become manifest for the day will disclose it. Because it will be revealed by fire and that fire will test what sort of work each one has done. The work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will also suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only through the fire. Let's pray together today. Father, today we thank you, we praise you, and we love you. And Lord, we can only say that and know that and experience that truth because you first loved us through your Son. Father, we pray today that your kingdom would come and that your will would be done. Lord, on earth as it is in heaven, within our hearts, our lives, within your body today. May your name be lifted high and may your word speak to us clearly today. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated today. Today, I think this passage is so pertinent as we continue our focus in ministry. But what a great truth for us as moms, as dads in, in, in life as well. We talk about the importance of the principles we see in this passage and I think we could all agree with that without question. And so I think when we look at this passage, we need to understand what's taking place, what's said here before we kind of look at the truths which are given. Uh, he, he's saying something very specific. He's saying, for those who have been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have been cleansed forever and ever more. You've been cleansed and washed from your sins from all the past, from all the present, and from all the future. And there's great truth in that today. Uh, one of the truths that you need to understand, that we need to understand as God's children, is what it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. It says, therefore, there is no what? There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you don't know that passage, you need to learn it. Mark it. Highlight it. Know it from the Word. Oftentimes, when we get in periods of times within our life, especially within church, we talk about ministry. Oftentimes, as moms, as dads in life, we often have this kind of mindset. Well, I'm, I'm not good enough. I, I'm not smart enough. Uh, God can't use me because of what's taking place within my heart or my life, what's happened in the past. Let me tell you what God says. If you are today, if you sit here and you are a redeemed child of God, you have asked Jesus. And matter of fact, we got, we got a new one in the family, all right? I got to meet with a precious family this morning and their precious son. He's a brand new, he's a brand new child of God as of, of yesterday. So you come to that point in time in your life when, when the Lord speaks to your heart, when the Spirit of God convicts you about sin and life, and you say, I need someone to wash me, to cleanse me, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to be my Master, to do what I cannot do and what nobody else can do. And you get to that point in that turn in your life, and you say, Jesus, 
You do that in this life. May you be glorified. You are a born-again child of God. And let me tell you how the Bible describes you today. The, 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 the Word of God describes you as a new creation. The old has passed away. You have become heirs to the throne of God and Christ Jesus. And He that began a good work in you, He was going to complete that. He empowers us by His Holy Spirit. He says we're alive. We've been set free. So we are to live that kind of life. That's what He refers to in this passage. So we were created we were meant for ministry within our hearts and our lives. Oftentimes, that's what people think. They think, well, I, 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 here's what you are. Here's where I am. And you, you don't know all the, the situation, Russ, I'm going through, but I, I can't do that. Well, let me tell you what the Scripture says about who you are. Sometimes we have a, a wrong mindset first and foremost. We have a wrong mindset about what God thinks of who we are and about what our role or our ministry opportunities are. And I give you a great description and illustration because it happens all the time in so many different ways. Uh, this past week, I had, uh, actually it was the week before. It was the week before I had a young guy, mom, dad came, said, hey, listen, know you coach baseball, da, 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 da. And man, our son just struggled a little bit, little bitty guy, playing a little peewee, you know, hitting off the tee. He said, can you maybe work with him a little bit here and there? So I said, sure. And we met at Gold Trap and got the tee out and got the ball set up and went through a couple things, looked at this and that, 10 toes, you know, to the plate and all these good things. And then I watched him swing a couple of times and I stopped. I said, let me ask you a question, champ. I said, let me ask you a question. Before we do any of this, what do you think? When you're coming out of the dugout, what do you think is about to take place? Here's his response. He said, I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out. I said, bingo, we got, we're going to fix this right here, right now. I said, we got to get that out of, our, out of our mind. I said, here's what I want you to do. When you come walking out of that, that, that dugout, here's your new word, whack it. Now say it to me, whack it. He went, whack it. And I said, say it, whack, whack it. We went back and forth. Everybody at Gold Trap knew what we were talking about. We're going to whack that ball. We were going to build some confidence in that kiddo. And sure enough, I don't care where the foot was, this or that, or, you know, knob to it and all those good things we talk about. When he said he was going to whack it, and that was his mindset, he began to whack the ball. I mean, he began to whack the ball. I said, I've seen all I need to see. Put that thing up. We can work on some th other things later on. First of all, we've got to get the right mindset. Sure enough, text mom and dad, how's the game going? Oh, my gosh, da, da, da. And then I get this picture. If you would, Ronnie, would you say, that's Gideon. First home run, right there. I said, my man, Gideon, mindset. I think Lee told me, he said, man, he's killing the ball. I said, yeah, it'll be $500, Coach Tyler. I'll be his manager in the days to come. I'm kidding. Mindset. I said, you got to think when you come out of that dugout, I'm going to run, run hard. Nobody's getting me out. Listen, as children of God, as children of God, sometimes we have that same mindset. The, the world's out for us, and they are. And the enemy begins to throw things within your head and your heart and your mind. The good news for children of God is this. There will be no charges brought against you. I don't know if you heard what I just said. As a child of God... When you stand before his throne, there will be no charges brought against you. You have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ forevermore. If that's the truth, which it is, then we need to walk in that truth. Walk as children of God of the Most High. And in this passage, he says he's simply referring to this day when we stand before the Lord as believers, and we give an account. See, our sins will not be brought before us because they've already been dealt with on the cross, which is great news. But what we will do is we will stand account for what we have done with what God has given. And so Paul writes here to the church, and he gives them three things. Let's look at this together. He gives them three things. The first thing that we see in this passage, Paul says we've been called to be wise Master architects. Literally, that's what this word usage says in this passage. To be wise master architects. I love the passage. Note, note the first word in, in this, in this uh, statement for us today. To be wise. And, and I love what the scripture says. In context, this word usage, wise, means 
It's not just referring to the the, the biblical wisdom which we refer to. We, we know what God's Word has to say, the heart of God's Word, the intent, what it means for us, that application. That's the biblical wisdom we know. But it's also the practical aspect of wisdom, meaning this, whatever we do, we do skillfully and we do well. That's what he's referring to in this passage, to do skillfully, to do it well. He says, don't just fly by the seat of your pants, but know the truth of God's Word, Know the timing of God's Word in your life. Walk in His empowering presence, and you'll see that difference. Let me ask you a question. How important is that for us in life? It's huge. We all know that. It's huge. How important is this for us in ministry in life? That's, that's just as important as well. You know, I, I asked uh, Haley to do the, the announcements. Actually, Haley took over the announcements today, and you are done. That was funny. Anyways... Ministry surveys, we hand those out. We have those out in the foyer, and you might be a guest. I I encourage you as a guest to pick one up. If you have a church home, take it back with you and see what ministry, what area the Lord has laid upon your heart. But the first thing we ask you to do, and she said it so beautifully, don't just pick it up and just fill it out. The first thing you need to do is pray. You need to pick that thing up and look at the ministry ministry opportunities and areas, and you need to say, the Lord... Lord, may your kingdom come, your will be done within my heart and life and your church. We don't assume anything when we we pick those up. Well, I'm just going to check off where I've been before. No, I want you to pray. Pray for God's wisdom and His timing. And when you have God's wisdom and timing and His will is in your heart, let me tell you what you're going to have. You're going to have a peach which surpasses all understanding. That's so true. I had another great meeting this past week. and We have a church member here at First Southern. So encouraged about all the things that are taking place. Had a great time talking about what's going to be coming in the days to come. And this is part of the email I, I received back that we received. It says, I came home today filled with more confidence and excitement of the purpose and the spirit that I've been assured of in a long, long time. And I said, wow, it just blessed my heart immensely. So excited about what's taking place within his heart and life, within the church. Why? Because we understand we are to be wise master architects and to build on what Christ has already given us. Sometimes people ask the question, they say, well, what ministries do you offer at First Southern to be a part of? We, we have ministries that the Lord lays upon my heart. We have ministries that the Lord lays upon your heart. And that's important to understand. In this passage, if you were to look at this in this passage, when he talks about being a wise master builder, you would say, now, wait a minute. If I'm thinking, if I'm reading that right, if I'm studying that right, he might be referring to you, uh, Russ, or those in the ministry, those who are pastors or leaders. Within that, we see that role in Ephesians chapter 4. And yes, there's truth in that. No question. That's who I am to be. We are to be. But also, it's for each one of us. That's why it says, let each one, let every believer... Let everyone who is a part of the body, each and every single one of us. I I love it. Our our kids have ministry gifts to be used to serve the Lord. Our students do. Our our college, our single, every every person a part of the body of Christ has a gift to be used to build the body of Christ. Every single one. And I've got news for you. We might have a different giftedness. We might have a different calling. But we all have the same responsibility according to the truth of God's word. Amen? Amen. Okay, everybody said amen. you got to get a form. All right. He says we are to be wise master architects. The second truth he gives us in this passage is this, that we've been given a great foundation. Amen? We've been given a great foundation. We've been given the greatest foundation, the Lord Jesus Christ. Last night I had a great teaching time, so to speak, with... My family, we uh, attended a, uh, a wedding, and the wedding was set in a different, um, literally a, just a different denomination, so to speak. It had a different approach with how that wedding takes place, different beliefs and what have you, uh, which is great because I was asked in the, in the car on the way home, what do I think about this, what do I think about that? And I said, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. The question is, is what does the Word of God say? That's what matters. We have too many opinions in our society today. Our opinions mean absolutely nothing compared to the truth of God's Word. Nothing. And so we got into this conversation, well, where did this take place or where did this take place? Where did this come from? Why do we do this? Why do, they, why do these things take place? Which is absolutely wonderful. And I said, well, I'm just going to tell you right now, everything that we want to do, that we are, as, a, as an individual and as a church or whoever it may be, is we want everything to stand on the Word and the Word of God alone. 
and I want to make that very clear today. We let the Word of God stand alone. We don't put anyone or anything parallel or equal to the Word of God because nothing can stand parallel or equal to the Word of God. can't be done. So they say, well, if that happens, and da, 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 begin to ask the questions. And sometimes if you don't think kids are listening, they, they are. It's because Clifton, this is what I heard from my son. Well, Clifton and Ron always say, or this or that or whatever it was. And I said, well, praise God. It's a good word. You're getting there, bro. You're just still new, all right? <laughs> that was brought up, all right? And so I said, praise God. Because that's exactly what we're talking about in DU classes. And, and so it, it's so important. Matter, matter of fact, take your Bible. Turn to the left with me right quick. Let's turn to the book of John. John chapter 9. We're talking about Jesus being the foundation. This whole chapter deals with Jesus healing a blind man. And it's a powerful picture of Jesus being our only foundation. We know what takes place here. Here's this man. He's born blind and they bring him before Jesus. Jesus begins to talk and he simply makes some mud and he spits on the dirt, literally, and he takes it and he puts it on the eyes of this blind man. And then when he's done, he tells this man to go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is, has a great meaning and context as well. When the man comes back, we see that he can see and begins to give testimony. Of course, these men, these Pharisees are furious that this takes place on the Sabbath with a blind man because if you were born blind, that means there was sin in your life. How tragic is that? The mindset of these folks. He had done something wrong. Look at us. We're good. Our parents were good. Our grandparents were good. Oh, what a, what a scary mindset. He was born blind so that God could use him for this divine purpose, for this right here, and that the whole world would forever know what God can, only God can do. So they bring him before him and say, how does this take place? And he begins to tell them, well, I don't know. I don't even know the guy. So they call him back again. Look what it says in verse 24. For the second time they called the man who had been blind, And they said to him, give God, I'm sorry, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. (laughs) Aren't Aren't you glad they called you back a second time? Bless you, men. He answers, says, whether he's a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that I was blind and now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them and said, I've already told you. You would not listen. There, there's the problem with most of the people in the world today when it comes to the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to listen. When do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become one of his disciples? It's pretty incredible how this man who was considered an outcast has so much wisdom that God would use so incredibly. They rivaled against him saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. Not of Jesus. And there's your problem. See, if you have the wrong foundation, you're going to have a lot of problems in life. Their foundation was upon a man. All they had to do is a little research about that man Moses and know that his foundation was none other than God and God himself. As a matter of fact, Moses just did nothing but point to Jesus, y'all. That's all he did. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, why is this amazing thing? You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. You know what he just said to him? There's only one who can do that, and that's God himself. And that's who he was, God in flesh. If anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone... Open the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and you would teach us, and they cast him out. In other words, that's called conviction, y'all. If you want to know what conviction looks like, it's right there in the scripture. They want to know part of it. They heard it. It tore to their hearts, and I love what takes place. The story's not over. Verse 35 says, Jesus heard they'd cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is it, sir, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and is he who is speaking to you? And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. 
Let me tell you something, church. The only foundation that I need, that you need, and the world needs has been laid by Jesus Christ himself. That's it. It's all you need. It's not Jesus plus anything. It leads us to the, the third truth we see from the scripture back in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Look what it says in verse 12. Now if anyone builds, what a great truth, not just for ministry, but for moms, for life, for families. If anyone builds, third truth, build wisely. Be a master, wise master architect. You've already been given number two, a foundation, so build wisely. Because our foundation is secure, in the Lord Jesus Christ, continue to build upon Him because what we build will be tested by fire. That's what the Scripture says. And he goes through this list and sometimes people get to this and they go, wow, this is, this is pretty intense. What does it mean? I think I have an idea. Well, he makes it very clear for us. He lists out these things which we see. There's gold, silver, and precious stones. That's one list of those things. You know what fire does to all those things? It tests them. It only proves them to make them what? Better. And then fire, look at the next list. Wood, hay, and straw. You know what fire does to wood, hay, and straw? It gone. How many of you here would say, hey, uh, I'm going to make an all wood straw house? That would be a wise idea. Now, there are places where there's no question they have to do stuff like that. But for you, I'd, I would say to build it as, as structurally strong as you possibly can. And so he lists out these two lists. And please understand today, these lists are not given as a, 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 about our talents. You say, well, the reason I don't do this or the reason I don't do that or the reason I don't serve here is because I don't have this gift or that gift that that person was given. It's not about our talents. It's not about our gifts, about any of those things. It's literally referring to what the Lord has given us specifically and doing our best with what He's given. And that's it and that's it alone. Remember, uh, we, we talked about this last week. It's why I said what I said at the beginning of this service. You don't compare yourself to anybody else because you are uniquely made that God has you and you alone to be used for a very specific purpose and intentionality. And the problem is, is I begin to look at their life or this life or that person, this person, this ball player, that ball player. You can say, hey, I, I look at what they do and I want to emulate that, but you be the best you. You be the only you that you can possibly be. That's important for us to understand. But whatever it is, let me tell you this, always give your best. Give your best to our Lord. That's what Paul's saying in this passage. That's how he, he begins it and that's what he's referring to in this part. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're building on, build it wisely because guess what? It'll be tested by the fire. Meaning what? Just because you're active doesn't mean you're accomplishing anything in church, folks. Just because you're active doesn't mean you're accomplishing anything. You can look busy all you want. That, that was one of my favorite things to do. We used to have work days. You know, when I talk about coaching, back in the day we had church league and, and they would bring all the coaches out and we had to get together and have this big work day. And I'd, I'd done that when I was 14, 15, and 16 in Springdale, ran the baseball fields. And first of all, they were doing it wrong. But anyway, secondly, there were just people everywhere, just everywhere. And they were like, this is what we need everybody to do. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going to give me a rake and I'm going to go over here and do my own thing. And I'd be going, acting busy. Acting the part, not accomplishing anything because of what needed to be done. Well, forget it. It wasn't being done. So we, we have to look at that within our lives as well. Are we, are, just because we're active doesn't mean we're accomplishing anything. You can be doing all kinds of things. You can be part of all kinds of ministries. And you can have the appearance of being useful. <coughs> Excuse me. But in the reality, if we're not giving our best, we're just going through the motions. We're just going through the motions. And if we're just going through the motions in church and life, you know what we're doing? We're building on the foundation with wood, with hay, and with straw. That's what we're doing. Let me ask you a question. When we stand before the Lord one day, after you get up from kneeling on that day, which he refers to for us as believers, when those things are brought there, we say, Lord, thank you for the foundation, and I gave my very best in these areas. Each one's work 
will become manifest. That's why he says in the scripture, the day the Lord will disclose it because it's been revealed by fire and that fire will test what sort of work each one has done. Meaning what? Are you doing what you're doing to be seen or that others may see him? Are you doing what you're doing to look good in the eyes of others or to look good in the eyes of him and him alone? Are you halfway kind of believer? When you run the race, you're just kind of jogging out there to get your time in, to just eventually get across the line. When you fight the fight, are you doing so to win the wreath or just to kind of make it to the end? Let me tell you something. We as believers have been called and created in the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever we do, we do it with all our heart, to the best intention, to the glory of God. So whatever you do, you better build wisely. Father, I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you for the power of your word today. Lord, this is a great word, great intentionality for us, great truth for us today. Lord, it's family. Lord, for every family that's here today. Lord, even for the body of Christ, what this means for us. The application is twofold. So Lord, may that be received today. I pray for moms and for dads. That they think about their life and their family. That they make sure that Jesus is their strong foundation. Their sure foundation. And they build wisely. Lord, I also want to pray for us as the body. That what you've given us, you've given us specifically to be the best that we can be for your kingdom, for your glory, and yours alone. Today, we want to say thank you for being here. And today, if the Lord speaks to your heart, if the Lord calls to your heart like he did in Cooper's heart yesterday, to know him. Today is our time of response. We'll be here at the front. I'm here. Daniel will be here. You just say to the person next to you, hey, today that's my life. God's called me to a relationship today. It's the greatest day of your life. You might be looking for a church home. I don't know. It just might be between you and the Lord about where you are and what he's calling you to do in the, in the area of a specific ministry. Whatever it is, let the Lord speak and then we'll respond to him. Father, be glorified in this time. For your, for your name, for your sake alone. Amen. Let's stand. As we stand, we respond. We fall down. We lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. The greatness of mercy and love at the feet. you to remain standing if you would. And this is our, our time of offering here at First Southern. As guests, as family, we are blessed to have you here today. We don't ask you to give in any way, shape, or form. This is the privilege we have as the body to give back. The men are going to make their way forward today. All right, and as the men make their way forward, if you have a prayer request or need, and that's on that card 
when the plate comes by, if you would, just put that in there. All right, Rob, I'm going to ask you if you would, if you'd pray for the offering this morning, my friend. Lord, I love you and thank you. Thank you for a beautiful week. Thank you for our mothers here today, Lord. Thank you. Without women, Lord, there would be no men. Um, thank you for my mother for raising me the way she did. Thank you for my wife and, and how she's raising our children today, Lord. Um, bless, this, bless this offering, Lord, that we may be used to further your kingdom. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Be seated. again and we were so blessed to have you be a part of the service here at First Southern today. If you have the opportunity and you're in the River Valley, we would love to have you be a part of our corporate worship service Sundays at 930 to 1030 at 12 West Central in Central City, Arkansas. Bless you and have a wonderful week.